Orpheus was the son of the god Apollo and Muse Calliope. As a child, he was gifted with a litter, and through that, an even greater gift became evident. Constantly, many would gather from near and far to hear the divine talent. It was at one such gathering that Orpheus noticed a wood nymph named Evridiki, a love of first sight. It wasn't very long before they were inseparable and married. The wedding feast was bright and gay. As the feast drew to a close, the lovebirds, still starry-eyed, started for home, hand in hand. Waiting in the woods, though, was the shepherd, Aristaeus, who jumped at them in an attempt to kidnap Eurydice. Orpheus, though, was fast on his feet and grabbed Eurydice and began to run. Aristaeus took chase, when suddenly Eurydice stumbled and fell, her hand slipping from Orpheus's tight and protective grip. He turned around to find the life slipping from his beloved. During their flight, Eurydice had stepped in a nest of snakes and been bitten by a deadly viper. Their love was true and intense, but too short-lived. Orpheus's grief was inconsolable. Apollo, unable to bear his son's grief, pulled some strings to allow Orpheus to descend to the underworld and petition Hades, Lord of the Dead. Now Hades was as hard as steel in his role as overseer of the dead. Many had approached, begging for loved ones back, but he was not easily swayed. Down below, Orpheus played his lyre and sang his grief to Hades and his queen, Persephone. So beautiful and heartfelt was Orpheus' song that Hades wept openly. Persephone's heart melted and even Cerberus, the three-headed dog that guarded the entry to the underworld, covered his many ears and howled in despair. Orpheus won his quest. Hades relented and granted Orpheus his wish. Eurydice would be allowed to follow Orpheus back up into the light on one condition. Eurydice would have to remain behind Orpheus as they walked, and Orpheus was not under any circumstances to look back at Eurydice. If he did, Eurydice would remain in the underworld. The path back up to the land of the living was long and dark, and Orpheus's worries plagued him. As he reached the surface, he could wait no longer, and he turned back to make sure Eurydice was behind him. Eurydice, though, was still in the shadows. Orpheus had not kept his word. He saw the beautiful face of his beloved for but a second before she was sucked back into the darkness and the world of the dead. Orpheus was forced to return to the earth alone in utter desolation. And so it is said that whenever you hear music which mourns lost love, it is the spirit of Orpheus that guides the hand that plays it.